This week on the Baseline Podcast, Josh and I are talking about football, specifically college football and the NFL. We're talking about what has happened to the Browns. Is it truly Deshaun Watson's fault? Is it the offensive line's fault? Or is it Coach Stefanski's fault? Then we talk about college football. We talk about the upsets. Notre Dame choking against Northern Illinois. We talk about how Ohio State, Georgia, Texas dominated and what has happened to Michigan. All that and so much more coming up on the Baseline Podcast. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Baseline Podcast. I'm Ben, that's Josh. He is back on American soil. They did not keep him there. There were things I was wanting to say in the episode last week, but we thought I uh-huh. probably shouldn't say that while while he's there on Canadian soil. Um, but uh, yeah, so he's back. Um, and also, uh, we've had a phenomenal weekend of football. But before we get into that, Josh, how was your trip back? What have you been doing lately? Anything fascinating in Josh's world? Hmm. Uh, nothing too crazy. I mean, it was just getting a... Uh... I mean, I'm all done like traveling. I think like August was a heck of a month to have a lot of fun and get to go to a lot of different places. Yeah. And now I think the rest of the fall is just a matter of getting locked back in to work like a normal routine, working out, you know, sh- spending time with the Lord, all those kind of things that like, yeah. you know, are usually a part of my everyday life that, you know, kind of got pushed to the side a little bit with uh, all the extra fun stuff, which was awesome. August was fun, but now it's like locked back in time back to, you know, getting into discipline time and I mean also having the weekends to watch uh, some college football again yeah. so that's kind of like Ben is a like transitioning week like getting back into you know like a normal routine again so that was my week uh summary how about you sir well you know I would say that you know you really enjoyed your nice month of vacation some would say that the leader of our country has had a whole four years of vacation (laughs) um sorry i had to get my political joke in for the day uh no my my weekend was great we actually had national team tryouts for the u19 national team here in hungary for american football so we had like 110 kids show up i think it was around 110 and we had to cut it down to 77 basically had to tell 20 plus kids like hey (laughs) You're not great enough yet. So like it, it's definitely was a, an experience, but it was really fun. I enjoyed it. Teaching is just hectic. I could spend a whole podcast on teaching, but we won't get into that. But uh, maybe I should do that. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, that that's pretty much been my week. Uh, watched the Browns, which do you want to start with the Browns topic or do we start with college? Do we just you know start with the I Browns? Think, I think the we obvious, start with uh, the Browns. The obvious, yeah, that's yeah. Uh, the most recent, the, the most, I think, fresh in our mind. A game that you and I probably both watched start to finish. We did. Uh, I thought it was, I mean, it was very hyped up. We came in both thinking yeah. of Cleveland Browns win. I thought this so. was the 425 slot. Tom Brady was making his broadcast debut. I think everybody Which wanted. He didn't do great, by the way. Just Yeah, we can get into that. I I was a little underwhelmed with his Just performance as well, but even as, more as well as Colt McCoy, by the way. Colt McCoy on college football was atrocious, but we I didn't actually know he did that. Oh, it was awful. It was a terrible debut. Uh, even more underwhelming than Tom Brady and Colt McCoy, though, I think, was the Browns' performance effort, awful. what have you, to go out there and uh, play the Lay way that egg. they did it. <laughs> I mean, you can even look at, like, the numbers that Dak Prescott put up. Like, it was announced before the game, richest contract in NFL history. Yep. He's going to get $60 million a year on average. Didn't even reach 200 yards in that game, but he didn't need to because the Browns did the $60 not... million. That's a whole other debate. <laughs> yeah, but the Browns were never in this game. I, there was never a thought in my mind that they were going to win. This was always Dallas's CD Lamb was unguardable in this one. Um, the defense got, you know, destroyed. The offensive line got destroyed. Our special teams got destroyed. It was just all around yeah. lack of effort from all parties involved. Lost the game, I'd say, in every in every facet, offense, defense, special teams. And a lot of people will pin it on Deshaun Watson, but like I said, I think every facet of the team – also has their share of blame as yeah. well. I have three thoughts into this game. One, I think that Cleveland, for some reason, thought they were just going to be able to wake up this year and this was their year. You know, it is what it kind of felt like. You know, there was hype. You know, you had Donovan Mitchell with the, you know, before the game, hanging out with the fans. You had all these different celebrities, you know, pumping up the Browns, which is great. But it just, it didn't feel like they wanted it. Maybe that's just me. You know, I, I don't know, Josh. Maybe that's just me, but it just didn't seem like they wanted it. My second thing is this. As much as I don't want to put the blame on Deshaun Watson, this might have been the one of the lowest points I've seen him as a quarterback 
for the Browns. Now, I'm not saying he wasn't helped because the offensive line was my third point. The offensive line played absolutely awful, was atrocious. Like, mm-hmm. I, I just – and I sit there, well, you don't have a run game. You didn't go out and try to get a back that can complement Chubb, right? You got an old veteran in Foreman and a bunch of guys that really have not proved anything. And now you're relying on then Njoku gets hurt halfway through the game, which that's a whole other story that if he's out for a while, that just changes the dynamic. So for me, I just it just felt like the Browns showed up. Like the defense at least at times looked decent. I just was like, you know, they gave up a punt return for a touchdown. It was just like, this is at home. This wasn't in Jerry's world. Right. This was like at home in your dog pound. And You know, they're talking about all these different naming changes and the new stadium. It's like, I just feel like everything was so hyped up about the Browns that we forgot how to play football. And you know what? I am going to hold Stefanski up to a standard, but I'm also going to hold Deshaun Watson to a standard. You've been here for like two years, over two years. And there's no more rust to shake off. There's no more rust. And it's not even that. It's, It's the fact that the guy we gave up for you is just look like a whole nother human. And then you look at the draft picks we gave up and you look at every single one of those draft picks and almost every single one of them have been a hit for Houston. And it just, it makes me frustrated because again, when it originally happened, we know your standpoint, Josh, you made it very vocal way back then too about, about the move and how you were really questioning it. And I was kind of in the middle. I was leaning more towards like, Hey, this is a great, great opportunity. And now I'm just at the point where I'm like, let's just cut him. Like, I know that sounds dramatic, well, you have Jameis Winston there. And you know what? If it can get you through this year, I'm not I'm not opposed. I'll, I'll be honest. We haven't had a 300-yard game outside of Joe Flacco. Like, I, I just, again, maybe I'm just ranting right now, but I'm just, it just, it's, it's so irritating because you, you, you have such a team that can do something with, and yet nothing's going to happen. Yeah. I mean, the, the excuse is going to be made if you're on in the Deshaun party, the offensive line. And I mean, that's granted yeah, but, uh, but, 17 quarterback hits. Five of them came from Micah Parsons. Four of them came from Demarcus Lawrence. But the offensive line is like basically the same one that we had last year. Yeah, It's not like we had like the lack of depth offensive line. We're putting uh, like fourth string right guards out there and stuff. Now, like Dewan Jones is out there. Was a, uh, was it Treader? Our center is out there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all Jedrick Wills is out there. Like all these guys. That are on our offensive line. No, it was Pochis was at center. Pochis was strength. center. He was back healthy. Pochis was back healthy at center. You had, yeah, you had everyone out. And okay, people will say, well, Willis didn't play, and you know, you had like Wills didn't play, and you didn't have, you know, a full healthy Conklin. I'm like, I don't care. Like, you know, I, I dude, it's just it, it's so frustrating. And Deshaun Watson, like, do you agree with me that he has to figure it out soon? Or they're really going to have to start thinking about, do they put Winston in? Like, do you do you feel like he has to figure it out here in the next, let's say, four weeks, five weeks of the season? Well, the good news is the Ravens and the Bengals also lost. So we're only behind one game, I guess, in one yeah. team for the division. But next up is the, at Jacksonville. We get to host the Giants. We're at the Raiders. We're at Washington. You can make the argument that if Dallas was at least on our level or a better team. All those teams. You should beat them every single those one. Those all should not be any losses there. At least you go three and two in this stretch. At at the very least. Before you got to play at Philly on October 13th. So these next few games, is I don't think that they're going to be able to make the same excuses. Like no. if the offensive line gets no. manhandled in this one, if Deshaun Watson is, you know, laughing about bad plays and – finishing with under 200 yards and just playing the way that he did over there in these games, that's a problem. And it's also, I think, very uh, interesting that after that game, another lawsuit comes out against him. Yeah. I, from an incident in 2020. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't be opposed to having Jameis Winston as a starting quarterback. Like, and I know that sounds dramatic, but like, what, 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 <laughs> We were fine with a 40-year-old Joe Flacco last year. We actually won games. Like, like I'm not opposed to putting James Winston. At least the dude has character. He's a guy that's a leader. He's a guy that's he's putting himself out there to to be a part of Cleveland. Like, when was the last time you heard Deshaun's like out there in Cleveland just like, you know, doing things? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. 
Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm overreacting, but I'm just I'm so yeah, sick. Yeah, I mean, this is week this one. This is the only game of the season that we have I to know. look at, and I guess I'm just trying to like think of things in context and like over the past, like Baker Mayfield. Like, let's talk about that. Twenty four of thirty, two hundred eighty nine yards, four touchdowns, no picks, and a thirty seven to twenty win over Washington. But that's a pretty typical Baker Mayfield game against a bad yeah. team. That's why the Bucks went nine and eight last year. That's why. You know, with two minutes to go and a chance to defeat the Detroit Lions in the playoffs, we all saw it coming that he was probably going to throw a pick or get sacked three times or something like that and not be able to get it done yeah. in that scene. And they actually do get to play Detroit next week. So I imagine that we're going to see a much different Baker Mayfield in that one. I'm hoping that we'll see a much different Deshaun Watson against the Jags. But again, Look, I don't know. It's, we're both it's we're so both, unpredictable. We both want to be proven wrong. Like, I want everyone listening. Like, we both want to be proven wrong. Like, we don't want this to be like, Deshaun sucks. We paid him all this money. Like, yeah, the best thing they did this offseason was transferring his his salary into a bonus, like just to have free cap space, right? Like, I just think at the end of the day, like Najoku's out for at least a couple weeks. That's mm-hmm. hurt. That's gonna kill the Browns here in the next few weeks. Like, that's really gonna hurt. Um, you know, Mari Cooper. I I don't know if he just exists anymore or, or what's going on there. Yeah, you uh, want to hear how uh, Cleveland's receivers did, and this could awful. have something to do with the Disgusting. way that Deshaun played too. But yeah, Mari Cooper, uh, two catches for sixteen yards on um, nine targets. Uh, Jerry Judy, three catches for twenty five yards in the touchdown on eight targets. And Joku, four catches, forty four yards, no touchdowns on five targets. Elijah Moore. Three catches for nine yards on six targets. Just hurts. Just hurts. It does hurt, yeah. So in this moment in time, the Deshaun Watson experiment is definitely a failure, but we have, you know, 16 more games this year to, like, make that final verdict. But Do you think that if if this season ends, you know, no playoffs, let's say nine and eight, eight and nine, do you think that, that the Haslam's kind of forced Barry's hand and say, like, we need to do a shift. Do you think that happens? Do you, do you think there is that shift that would happen if they have a bad year? Yeah, I don't know. If, like, most of his salary has been converted to signing bonus, would that mean that if you cut him, you wouldn't be out too much money? I, then? Think, there's l- I think there's less money that would be associated with it. Maybe at least no, they're looking next year no t- after that, a quarterback. I, I just hmm. – it's just tough, man. Like, it's tough yeah. to see. It really is. But, I mean, next – yeah, that's the Browns. I mean, I guess – do we want to preview this next week's game since since, uh, since, since we're, we're on it, on yeah. The, on the I mean, talking to Jags, that's going to be a road game at Jacksonville, so there's going to be some heat involved. And the Jags are coming off a loss, uh, 20-17 to 17 to the Dolphins, which I don't think anybody's too surprised. Tyreek there. Hill got arrested, and yet yeah. somehow the footage doesn't add up with everything that he said. Hmm. Mike hmm. and footage was interesting, yeah. Interesting. Uh, it was a pretty typical Miami game, though. Uh, two over three and thirty-eight yards, and Hill and Waddle each had over a hundred. A chain also had seventy-six uh, through the air, too, as well as a rushing touchdown. So Miami just using all their weapons in that game. But on the Jacksonville side, uh, Trevor Lawrence, uh, actually, bad quarterback play was like a theme of Week One, Ben. I think there are only two quarterbacks that got over three hundred yards. Yeah, this is Trevor absolutely. Lawrence's yeah. day. This is Trevor Lawrence's day. 12 of 21 for 162 yards, a touchdown, no picks. He just really hasn't been the guy that I think everyone thought he was going to be. Really, Which don't. is why I'm also shocked that they gave him $55 million a year for the next yeah. four years because I don't think anybody was beating down the door to take him from them. No. Where, where you look at Trevor Lawrence as the Clemson quarterback, the highly ranked recruit, all the potential, we don't – like if you look at the way that he's played in the NFL, like – in his career there's no reason that you would think any of that it's yeah. all like the back stuff and they're just waiting for their quarterback to like turn into this guy that they think he can be excuse me but yeah for this one um i mean i would hope that this is a cleveland browns win even before seeing what i saw from the dallas game i would have thought that this is a game that cleveland can and should win yeah but I, I, I have a uh, feeling we're going to see some ugly offense yeah Oh no, I I have already have a score prediction, and I'm gonna say, you know, I agree with you. Everything you said. I think the Browns defense is gonna show up. I think in this game a little bit more. The offense is still gonna be like they're just gonna have no run game. We we both know that. So, to me, I I say the Browns win, but it's gonna be like one of those very ugly, brutal wins in you know September. I'm gonna say the Browns win. 
13 to 7. Hmm. And that that sounds ugly, and I really believe that's yeah. how ugly it's going to be. I'll be 100% honest with you. Hey, it's a weekend that I have to work, so I'm. if that's the case, I'm glad that I don't have to watch that. But, that's true. Um, I'm thinking low scoring, too. I, I, I'm not going to say it's low scoring. I'm going to go with 19 to 16, Cleveland Browns win. Yeah, uh, I just I just have no faith in the offense at all. Uh, Me neither. Very little. Um, but yeah, so th- there's that game, and I, I think that's the way way we go. Yeah. Also, I'm I got to make some corrections here. I said J.C. Treader. He's not even. No, that's why I roster. corrected you. That's why I said Pochich. There you I go. Said yeah. Pochich, yeah. Man, such a casual on over here. Such a casual guy. Okay, well, that's the Browns. Um, Let's talk about something that I care a little bit more about, and I think you too, sir, and that was the college football weekend. Oh, absolutely, sir. We didn't have a whole lot of exciting top 25 (laughs) matchups, but we we had a lot lot of clunkers in this week, and most of the teams won their clunkers, but one couldn't get it done, Really, and that's the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Against Northern Illinois. Which, by the way, that coach's speech at the end, I would put that on tape and play it for every team I ever coach. Like, that that was just the most... Like, I would literally had a tear down my eyes. Like, this is awesome. Had chills running down my, my arms. Um, it reminded me of Rudy, but the opposite way. Um, but, no, uh, I, I, I think we'll start there. But, actually, before we go to the Notre Dame... Can we talk about Michigan, Texas real quick? We can talk about Michigan, Texas. Um, because we almost nailed I the think, score. I, I know. I, I do want to point that out. But also, can I point out that Michigan's office offense is atrocious? Like, like this, is not, a high, this is not a high state fan. This is just like a general, like, I coach football here in Hungary. And there are Hungarian offenses that look very similar to what was happening not just against Texas, but against Fresno State. They have no quarterback. Their offensive line is bad. Like, I think uh, I was listening to Venice to Sports, and they said, like, 10 of the 14 pressures by the right tackle. Like, dude, it's just like, did it not remind you of, like, a JV football team? Like, I know it sounds really bad. It's very disrespectful, but I'm just, it just hurt. Like, it hurt to watch. I did not see Menace's breakdown, but just from what I saw from watching the game live, so this bad. Michigan team, the last three years, has had an identity of being a bully they on the line of scrimmage. The, the offensive line will bully you, and the defensive line will bully you. And that's why they can play the style of football that they have, where they can oh run it, gosh. and you know they're going to run it, and they know you know they're going to run it, and they don't care because they're still going to go and get that four or five yeah. yards of carry and occasionally bust off the explosive play. But they can't do that anymore. Texas is defensive line who – we were wondering how they might do after losing, you know, Tavondre Sweat, Byron Murphy, two big time uh, draft picks there. Texas like, showed up, man. What this matchup will look like, and the Texas Texas defense manhandled the them offense, at the line man. of scrimmage, and Texas offense manhandled Michigan's defensive line at the line of scrimmage. Texas like, is Michigan's legit. Identity, Texas is legit, by the way. I want to point that out to people. They're legit. That too, and I'll get to that too. But Michigan's going to have to find a new way to win no. football games because do they you... are not going to be able to win the way that they have the last three years playing that same style and... of football. And Sharon Moore is going to have to figure that out. And, and Donna, it sucks for him as an offensive line coach yeah. oh, to have yeah. to like try to pull away from that that thinking. But I'm not even sure if Davis Warren's a quarterback that you can like try to be like a, a quarterback focused well, offense. Orgy, and, orgy either. I mean, dude, right. they're, they're Donovan Edwards. Like, where's Donovan Edwards? And I love what Joe uh, was it Joel Klatt or someone said like, no, no, I think it was R.J. Young was like. Can he just show up when it's not like the high state game or a big game in the playoff? Like a if, big you look game, at, if you look at his, game. no, if you look at his stats outside of big games, he does nothing. And this guy got on the cover of the college football game. He's been hyped up as a Heisman candidate. I mean, he's gotten sixty yards through two games, and I'm like, dude, the guy from Boise State looks better than you. Like I, I to me, it's just like I know it's not all on him, but it's just like the defense is not the same. Look. Texas is good, and again, I think they're legit, but I think they made Texas look really good because I think Texas is still maybe not – I don't think they're better than Ohio State, even though they've been ranked behind of Ohio State. But, like, 
when I hear Michigan fans say, oh, Michigan's going to be a high state again, I'm just like, really? The team that I just watched this past weekend, I don't think it even touches the field with a high state or Oregon. And does it make you wonder now that, you know, certain people are gone from the program? Isn't it kind of interesting how they can barely figure out how to stop anyone? And it kind of seems like it's back to the 2020 version of Michigan. Is it is it not weird to you? I that, know what you're insinuating, and you're dead wrong, sir. Am I dead wrong? Am I dead you're wrong? You're dead wrong. When you lose your defensive coordinator, your head coach, your no, strength I, coach, like yeah, uh-huh. all these starters, uh-huh. like uh-huh. you should expect a dip in production like this. Yes, I get a dip in production, but like the production that we're seeing is definitely not something that you've built up your program, as they've claimed to say. I'm just okay. saying. I'm just we're saying. We're going to agree to disagree on that. But I no, do no, have no. some thoughts but, on Texas. But it's the thing, though. Who they bring in to replace him as defense coordinator? Who they bring in? Do you know yeah, who they brought I mean, in? Wayne Martindale. Martindale literally is the one who's like the founder of the defense that, that Michigan yeah, has been. Martindale running. is good. And what I'm saying is, is that they I don't didn't think he's replace. Just good. Yes, but what I'm saying is, he spent time in the NFL. He spent time doing exactly what Minter did. Right, went to the NFL, came back. What I'm mm-hmm. saying is, is that you look. It's you swapped out like Sharon Moore, right? He was the offensive line coach, and now mm-hmm. he is what? He's the head coach. He's still doing stuff with the offensive line. It's not like things have completely shifted. Other than the fact that Jim Harbaugh's gone, which I've heard some Michigan fans are happy, some are not. Like, there's a lot of mixed bags with that. Mm-hmm. What I'm saying is, is if you take away, and again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist guy, but I'm just saying, and also the documentary, we can go a whole spectrum on that. <laughs> but what I will say this, It's very interesting. I'll just say it's interesting. It's very interesting that the shift of the culture, right? The culture left, right? This, this past, whatever, three years of, of building a program left. If they truly built a program, right? What happened when urban left and he handed the keys to someone, what happened? It stayed pretty much the same, right? You had some different changes and stuff, but it pretty much stayed the same. Look what we haven't seen what Alabama's like, but we're going to see what happens when Nick Saban left, Right. We're going to see what happens with that. We're going to see what happens when, you know, when Bob Stoops left Oklahoma, you had your ups and downs, right? But what I'm saying is at least there was remnants of what it is. But if Michigan keeps playing the way they did on this weekend, this is not a team that goes, hey, we had dudes stacked up, ready to go for what happened. So, again, I, I, I come from the aspect of I'm just thinking about, like, all the good programs that have ever existed, you know, the Georgias, the Alabamas, even Ohio State when Jim Trestle left. You had that one bad year. Again, that was because of what? Penalties because of what happened, right? And you had a lot of different things. But I just think it's fascinating how big of a drop we're seeing with Michigan. Like, it's not even like, oh, oh, they went from a top 10 team to maybe a top 15 team. I don't know if Michigan's really a top 20 team right now, at least the team that we saw this past weekend. Again, that can change with time. I'm just interested to see how do they compete in the Big Ten against some of these other teams that maybe has has a better overall roster. Again, that's just – this is my perspective. For sure. And it sounded like what you were saying and what I thought you were getting at is no Connor Stallions, so now they can't play football. No, I, no the I just The only think, remnants think, that we have from the championship team last year are basically Sharon Moore, Donovan Edwards, and Will no, Johnson. No, what I'm saying is without without Stallions and what he, what he did – Right. There is that more of a chance where we now we had to play chess, chess football like we've had to before that happened. And well, there wasn't much success with Jim Harbaugh. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not saying like because he's not there, they now suck at football. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is when you have that ability, that advantage. Right. And again, I've said this for for many times over to people. Most teams do advanced scouting, but when you're so blatantly dumb and when you're so blatantly obvious of what you're doing, that's when there's a problem <laughs> when you're just making it very obvious and also using things that are a little more than advanced scouting. That's the whole other story of it. And again, this is coming from a coach, someone who literally like we watch other teams film because, you know, they were bringing up the film like, yeah, I watch other teams film. That doesn't mean I know their signals completely. Like I'm not staring at their coach going, hmm, you know, so I don't know. Again, some Buckeye fans are a lot worse than me. I just tend to yeah, be like Look. a lot of them are, but like, but I tend, and you know me, I tend to be like, look, whether they had our signals or not, we should still beat them. And I, I still believe that. So that's just my my take. I can just remember like Florida, for example, won the championship in 06. And then Tim Tebow's Heisman season, they went nine and three. But then they 
built up to another national championship yeah. the year after. And I'm not saying that's going to be Michigan. No, but no, I'm, I'm just, yeah. It's not like we haven't seen like a team win a championship, lose a bunch. Like they should only f- fall off to like eight and four, nine and three. And then we should expect them to win well, like 10 or 11 yeah. games if they are like legit a program. But that's what worries now, if me. This ends up, <laughs> if this ends up being like a six and six situation that's and scary. Sharon can ever like win eight games in a season, then, then yeah, like, they, then that maybe puts more just... proof to the Stallions thing. Then I think then that just adds the proof that they didn't need to be like, hey, wait, this is a weird three years you got here. And then all of a sudden, and all of a sudden you got bad again. But maybe, yeah. but yeah, you, you got to like continue to recruit. You got to like, let's, we can only, the, we can only beat a drum. We can only beat a drum so many times. Let's do talk about Notre Dame because I think it's fascinating because Josh, you've said on this show so many times that Freeman You've said he confuses you sometimes. I remember sometimes you say, like, "Well, with it, Marcus Freeman, Notre just, Dame can win the big game now. It just doesn't but they make can sense. also lose <laughs> a really bad game yes. as well." Like, let me read you some some numbers here. Uh, Northern Illinois is Notre Dame's fourth unranked loss now in the Marcus Freeman era, and from 2017 to 2021 against unranked opponents, they went 42 and 0. This was also uh, the l- largest underdog to defeat Notre Dame in over 30 years. Like, you got to go back to the 90s. Like, under Brian Kelly, you always won the games you should have, but you also lost, lost the, the games you should have. And that was the <laughs> criticism. It's like, why can't we get, like, a top 10 ranked win? Or why can't we, like, not, you know, get the piss, just not get the piss beaten out of us in the playoffs and, like, compete? With Marcus Freeman, all that is possible. If, only if, they could win these games that they absolutely should. You should not get manhandled when you're Notre Dame, whose pedigree is home, offensive linemen. Like you shouldn't get manhandled by Northern Illinois in a game like this. No offense to Northern. You should be Illinois. able to bully them into getting at least twenty points. Like we'll talk about some of the other clunker games. Like Penn State had a clunker uh, by against Bowling Green, schools, but one. Let's just point out, Max schools are out here just freaking like trying to pluck feathers off a bird. Oklahoma won a clunker against Houston. Alabama won a clunker against Houston, South Alabama. Which also, Houston's Oregon, terrible. Yeah. Oregon Houston's won a awful. clunker against Boise State. Like, there were... But at least Boise so, State's, like, at least Boise State's, like, a good team. That's the thing. Like, at least that game sure. is competitive. There's just a lot of games that should have been, like, not even close and then, or, like, then you look easier at, wins. I saw this meme, and you'll love this, Josh. It said, there was, like, a road, and it said, like, there was, like, two lanes, and it said, Georgia, Ohio State, and then, and Texas. And it said, on the other side... It, where everyone else is traveling. Like it, these three <laughs> teams are like, it, it, is it just me or does it just seem like there's a, we out to, after those three teams, there's a huge gap, like a big gap with the next group of teams. There might, there might be. Yeah. Like if you want to talk like tears, like Texas would be, be the only other one that's even close. Yeah. Like Ohio state manhandled Western Michigan. Like, grab them, slap them across the face like seven times and then rub their face in mud. Like mm-hmm. they they literally owned them. And Jeremiah Smith, by the way, is a dog. He is a dude. He outran five dudes on a simple hook and hook play. Like a simple <laughs> stop and hook and he outran five dudes for a touchdown. Judkins, yeah, another 100 yard game, uh, another uh, yeah, touchdown and performance w- there. Judkins, the freshman. Judkins could have had 200 yards if he didn't get an 80 yard touchdown call back. Right, he's back. Henderson looked the healthiest he's ever been, you know. But going Mm -hmm. back to Notre Dame, I think what's point of what you said was that there's something going on with that coaching staff that just seems like they don't get their guys ready for big games. Or I mean, sorry, small games. Like I just I I don't understand it. I don't either. And uh Freeman in the post in the post game is like we'll have to, you know, get to figuring it out and work on it. It's like why don't you have answers? You're the head coach. Like if Kirby Smart says something like that, we know that he has answers and he's just not like Same sharing with, them with the media. But with Marcus Freeman, I I do like him as a coach, but I feel like he legit like doesn't have answers for these. Like there's a repeating behavior here. Like like I said, this is the fourth on ranked loss in his tenure, and this is like year three for him. Like yeah. that's too many. That's too many for a program like this that's recruiting at the level that it has, that has the talent that it has, that to to be losing games like this. And they gotta go. I believe to Purdue for week three, and I'm not even sure if they can make it out of that one alive, which is an absolute wild statement to say. Yeah, I mean, it's the same with Oregon. Like, I feel like Oregon's at the point where 
you know, they barely beat Idaho. Boise State pretty much gave them to run all the way down, gave them a run for their money all the way down the very end. And Boise State's a very solid team. They have one of the best running backs in the country. They do. But Ashton Jean team you know, rushed but, for over 200 yards yeah, again, but I think then, three scores. Yeah, but then, you know, you have Houston who almost beat Oklahoma, and Houston is atrocious. They lost to UNLV. Like, they're so bad. Um, you know, and you look at Penn State with Bowling Green. Like, my dad's alma mater. My dad was kind of excited. Like, Bowling Green almost pulled off the upset in Happy yeah. Valley. Right? Like, first off, if we had, like, a segment, and maybe we'll start a segment of, like, stars of the weekend, and I think one of the stars of the weekend is the freaking Mac. The freaking <laughs> Mac showing up now. Like, Mac Nation is just, like, out the wazoo, but... Look, I, I think what we see, saw was a difference was that Georgia and Ohio State, no matter how bad the team is, and I, a lot of people, you know, they get into me like, well, Ohio State played Western Michigan. It's like, yeah, but you know what? They beat them like they should have. Like they, they should have. And all these other teams them. that we're talking about should have beaten their opponent like they should have. Like, and they didn't. I looked at I looked at Ohio State, and you look at their stats. It's not like they, you know, they just did their business, right? Judkins only ran it like nine times. Henderson only ran it eight times. Like, they kept their guys healthy, but put the beating down on Western Michigan to the point mm -hmm. where it's like, we can rest our guys. Oh, wait, what do they have now? A bye week. Now you have a healthy Ohio State going into a big, nice stretch here. It, to me, Ohio State and Georgia are just right now way above everyone else. And Texas is getting there. I still don't think they're there. I just think Michigan, that, that game doesn't prove a lot to me yet. But, man, I, I just... It's sad that a lot of these teams, but it, you know, and that's what I love about football, though. That's why we love college football. These teams are getting paid a million dollars to come play you, and you <laughs> beat, and you get beat. You yeah. Know? Um, just going over some of the other games that we had initially previewed that we thought might be interesting. Uh, looking at uh, Iowa State and Iowa. Iowa boy, did we overreact to Iowa? <laughs> we Holy overreacted cow, ben. way much, <laughs> way too much. <laughs> did you ever think that Iowa could allow twenty points in a game? No, I also thought Iowa's offense was fixed, but again, I was wrong. We did. I was Boy. wrong again. Yeah, the so offense, I, unfortunately, not fixed. Cade McNamara finished with 99 passing yards, no touchdowns, that's and two just, picks. That's just gross. That's just gross to listen to. The only offense they really generated was Caleb Johnson running back, 187 yards and two touchdowns on the ground. But outside of that, uh, nobody rushed for more than 16 yards. And then, like I said, Cade, only, Cade didn't even reach the 100 mark and threw the air. It's, it's just gross. It's just yeah. gross. Man, yeah. Even more like frustrating than being a Notre Dame fan probably is being an Iowa football fan and having to it's just like, go through stints like this. It's just like not fun. Not fun. Uh, let's see, another one uh, that we thought would be interesting. Uh, Tennessee, NC State. Uh, we learned a lot about Tennessee in this game, I think. They're um, good. I think They're their defense good. needs to start getting a little more credit. And that's not to say that NC State – had this elite offense or whatnot, not but we that good. <laughs> we've had we had questions about Tennessee's secondary uh, going into this season, and they held Grayson McCall to 104 yards, no touchdowns. Meanwhile, on the other side of the football, Nico Imaliava only had 211 yards, two touchdowns, two picks. But Dylan Sampson had 132 yards on the ground and two touchdowns. Nico also had 65 yards on the ground of his own and a touchdown. They're not just no, you know they, a passing air raid team. offense. I, I just you know, I, I'm interested to see when Tennessee plays a really tough team, like a t a really tough team. That'll be the test for them, I think. And they sure. play Oklahoma coming up, and the people are like, "Oh, that's a test." I'm like, "No, it's not." Like <laughs> Oklahoma is not the test that I'm talking about. Let me see them play. I Georgia. think Oklahoma is a decent test. Like it'll be the decent best test. game yeah, schedule yeah, yeah, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Let me see them. You got play a home Georgia. game at Kent State this weekend, and then yeah, then oh, you got yes, the Oklahoma game after that. Yep. Come on, Kent State. Well, well, then we're not going to really get to see them play a tough team for a while after Oklahoma because after that is Arkansas and Florida. Ugh. What do you mean, Florida? I mean, they're so good, man. Like, DJ Layway. That's, the Lagway. That's like the stretch of Florida's, like, murder schedule. Also, DJ Lagway. Uh, so I found out your head coach decided instead of having a guy who just threw for 400-plus yards, they're going to bench him and start Mertz instead. I'm like, are you stupid? Mertz is back. Yeah, like, but it just to me is so dumb. Like this dude is your future, and he just had a really nice game. I know it was against a crap opponent, against but, Samford. But I'm like, you're gonna st okay. I'm like, Florida does Florida. That's what they do. Yeah, yeah. I would have liked to have seen Lagway continue in that role. Another Mark's team, that, another team in Miami. Another team that came up to me. Another thing that showed up to me was Miami. 
I think Miami's legit. I, I think they're a legit team. I think Cam Ward is one of those guys that's going to, you know, look, if Miami will only go as far as their offense and defense, as long as they're consistent, they'll be fine. But we've learned with Miami mm-hmm. over the last few years, as soon as one of them goes, it seems like the, they just fall apart. Yeah, or they have a situation like with uh, Mario Cristobal not wanting to take a knee, and then they lose a game they shouldn't to Georgia Tech. That is true. That is true. Or you don't like punt when you should, or you fail fourth down conversion, and like just coaching mistakes. But at least early on, it, it looks like they're not even going to like end up in a situation like that where a coaching mistake could cost them. No, oh, no. Playing yeah. very good. Um, another game that we previewed. Uh, I called this an upset, and ha, huh, not even close. Clemson sixty six to twenty over App State. Yeah, App State. This one was over very quickly. Thought. It was thirty five to nothing after one quarter. Yeah, I mean Clemson. Look, App State. I was super shocked because I thought App State. They have a very solid roster. They have a really good quarterback. They have a really good running back. They have some talent. I just think that you had a really pissed off Clemson to be honest. With a you. very pissed off Clemson. Yeah, like team. a very mad. My gosh. Very mad team. Now. I don't think that's going to be the normal Clemson. I think they're going to come back down to earth and be a team that only averages about 20 points a game. I think that's where they're going to end up going to be. But, I mean, if you're going to get uh, something to get you started, I guess that's that's the way to go. Maybe that just also speaks to how good Georgia is, too, that they held Clemson to three points. Oh, no, that's true, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, no, the, last yeah. game, the last game here that I think uh, we talked about was the Oregon-Boise State game, and – Oregon was a 21 and a half point favorite coming into this one. And I thought that was way too much given what we Boise saw from great. Idaho the week before and what Boise uh, cool. had done the previous week. I thought that this game would be. They also a have fire uniforms, that. by the way. Boise State has fire uniforms. I love their uniforms. They do. Like Oregon is the uniform team, but Boise State also has uh, some a solid yeah. you know, threads out there as well. Um, but I got to watch the fourth quarter of this one and Dylan Gabriel just. He doesn't look the same. He's missing man. some easy throws. I know he just only was he only missed three passes in the game, but some of them were pretty big, like misses in that. Uh still just the 243 yards, two touchdowns, no picks. Um, and the defense also let Boise State stay in this one a little too long. But Ashton Gianti is a beast, Ben. Uh added 192 yards and three more touchdowns in this game. We I'll might be talking say... about him being in our Heisman candidates in the oh. future. Yeah, I, I was just going to say uh, you guys might want to um, keep a lookout today as we discuss. I'm just mm-hmm. going to say that. Nation's leading rusher, 10.2 yards per carry. That's stupid. In these That's first stupid. two games. Stupid. And he's probably going to continue to pad those because his next games are Portland State, Washington State, and Utah State, Hawaii, UNLV, Dude. San Diego State, Dude, he Nevada. might he might run for 2,000 this year. I wouldn't. Oh, he should easily me. get over 2,000 yards. Yeah. Oh man. I don't think he'll be winning any Heisman because they're gonna look at that competition yeah, and be like eh. I am mad though because but, in, in my fantasy league, one of my good friends here got him last year off a of waiver wire and I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. Mm. And now I'm just I'm really ticked off that I didn't get him last year. Because <laughs> he just and like his backup, by the way, is also good. Like he's averaging like eight yards a carry. Like it's just stupid. They like they're out of nowhere. The potatoes, man. Potatoes. Mm. Uh, shall shall we pre shall we should we do our power rankings before we preview in our Heisman watch list and then preview? let's go ahead and do that. Yeah, let's do it. So after two weeks in, should what I re- are should your I read- top five teams? Ben? Should I read them from last week? Should we go ahead? Because I-, I always forget yes. what I say. Yes, and then he claims that he said something else. Then I have to correct him. Um, <laughs> last week you had Ohio State at one, Georgia two, Texas three, Oregon four, Old Miss five. I had Ohio State 1, Georgia 2, Texas 3, Alabama 4, Oregon 5. My top five Mm. teams, should I just list them all? Should we do that? That might be a little bit smoother. Uh, Yeah. Number five for me, I'll start with one. Number one is Ohio State. Um, I I just, I think they did whatever we asked them to do. And actually, I think they looked better than the first week. I think they looked really Mm -hmm. good. Offensively, it's scary. Like, the two-back attack is just, it's scary. Georgia 2 still... Uh, Texas three. So my top three are the same. Uh, four is Alabama. I, I don't I should. It's not Alabama. Sorry. That was my last week. Sorry. Not Alabama because Alabama struggled against who they play Florida, South, South Florida, just like they did last year. Gross. But they had a big um, fourth quarter and pulled away. Yes. So I have moving up 
into fourth place. I have Old Miss at four. Old Miss, yeah. solid, solid. And then at five, I really, honestly, I could probably flip a coin and just put a team there. I feel like that's just what's happening lately. Um, but I decided, you know what? I'm going to go with a team that is playing really well at this current moment, and I'm going to put Miami. Ooh, the Canes. I just decided, you know what? I mean, tell me. There's no other team really you can put there that's not struggling. So that's what yeah, I have for my I think my the fifth life. spot has uh, some arguments that could be made. But, yeah, I like that. I would have never guessed that from you, Ben. I know. I'm, going, I'm changing it up this year, you know? Going a little wild. It's all All about the you. What do you got? All right. What I got, uh, I'm going to go ahead, uh, read my five again. Ohio State Uh, was one, Georgia two, Texas three, Oregon four, Ole Miss five. Yep. All right. So the top three are going to stay the same. Ohio State, Georgia, Texas. There's not really anything that happened that should change that. That I was was really salty when they jumped Texas above Ohio State in the AP. I'm like, seriously? Highest, I mean, I know Highest State Top 10 win. They gave him top oh, yeah. 10 win. Oh, yeah. Top 10 win. Yeah. That's well. going to be like LSU in 2019 beating Texas and calling that a top 10 win when they finished so 7 annoying. 5. So annoying. Hate it. Um, But I've been high on Ole Miss. They've been my five. I'm going to go ahead and stick them to four. And Oregon is dropping out for the time being, Ben. They got to prove to me Just that like they me. can like, annihilate an opponent. Yeah. Who are you putting right at five? Now, then? They got to. Who do I have at five? Well, I didn't think Miami, but I'm I'm sticking Tennessee here, actually. Tennessee, I thought about, but I I I, I was worried a little I think bit between about the Tennessee, bit, but... Miami, Alabama, maybe Missouri. If Alabama didn't struggle, if Alabama didn't struggle, they'd be at five right now. If they didn't yeah. struggle, I think you can make cases for all those. But right now, I'm just it's like Tennessee is doing exactly what I'd want to see them do with the teams in front yeah. of them right now, and they have a Power Five win. Uh, to go ahead into that too. So Tennessee at five for me. Uh, I got four of my top five from the SEC, and y'all can hate all you want. Like, I want to see some of these other conferences step up. That's true. To step up. Step up. So now we're going to move to our Heisman. Now we'll do one-on-one. We'll do one-by-one this time because it's a little more tricky. So Heisman watch list. I'm going to list yours so you can remember. You had Carson Beck one, Quinn Ewers two, Travis Hunter three, Cam Ward four, Dylan Gabriel five. I had Carson Beck, Quinn Ewers, Cam Ward, Travis Hunter, Dylan Gabriel. Um, I'll, I'll start. I'll start with my number one. All right. I'm I'm gonna put I'm gonna jump Quinn Ewers up there. I think he had a solid game. I think he had a solid solid game. Again, nothing against Carson Beck. I don't think Carson Beck did anything wrong. Like he was just he was you know he was good. It's just Quinn Ewers. He just looked like a very mature quarterback and went into the big house and said, this is my game and I'm going to take it. Um, And I'm going to say Quinn Ewers at one for me. I actually had the same thought. Like we're two weeks in the season. Carson Beck is going to have a lot of games in the SEC to go ahead and make this jump. But at least in this moment in time, I've gotten to see Quinn Ewers do this uh, against a, we'll see how good Michigan ends up being at the end of the season. But I still think a, a solid Michigan team, much better than anybody that, uh, maybe Georgia has played even Clemson talking about like, I still like Michigan I lo- a little more. I than love Clemson, us, I think. man. We just, we're on the same page today. And uh, I'm going to go number two, Carson Beck. I just think, again, I'm not going to drop him. Like I mean, this is not a penalty for Carson Beck. It's just the fact that Quinn Ewers played some better. So I'm going to go Carson Beck. I mean, he is, sh- he's done what he's been asked, right? He's not a guy that you asked to throw for 500 yards or run for a lot of yards. Like he just has to manage the game and he's managing the game and he's putting up good numbers with it. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, Put him there. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, same th- exact thought as you as Carson back there too. Uh, and then uh, going into my three. Yes. Uh, go ahead. You can getting away from this. the quarterbacks again. Travis Hunter is staying Ooh. at three for me. And it's always it's never been based on what Colorado's final record is going to be. I always thought at best they're going to be six and six. But after the Nebraska game, I think they might be three and nine. But he's still yeah, one agree. of the nation's top receivers, and he's still one of the nation's top corners. And the fact that he's playing elite on both sides of the football has to mean something yes at the power five level mm-hmm. so travis hunter still at three for me number three for me is going to stay cam ward uh i think he's just done way beyond i think what josh either of us had thought about like when he went to miami we we're like oh great cam ward he doesn't really flat he doesn't seem like he's going to be that great fit 
but he's turned out to be a great fit. And again, what we'll to see what Miami does in late in the season. But right now, I think Cam Ward is putting up Heisman type of a season early on. I'm gonna go Cam Ward. Yeah, uh, I was a little more high in Cam Ward coming to Miami than you were, but that is even true. still, like Heisman finalist, still to be seen, still to be determined. But at least at this point in the season, he's playing exactly like one. And Cam Ward's gonna be my four, uh, sticking into my top five right there. Uh, he was in my top five last week, right? Yes. Yes, yeah, he was so at staying, four for you. Yeah, staying right there at four. So I think my my uh, top, top four, four guys are the same, it. just Beck and Ewers switch spots. Yeah. So my number four is was Travis Hunter, but it's not Travis Hunter anymore. It's Ashton Jane T. This okay. dude, I'm sorry. Like, I can't just not put a guy that's averaging 10 yards a carry. It's not like he's carrying <laughs> it five times. He's carrying it freaking like 20 times a game. Um, This dude... If he keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to get an invite for the Heisman. If he puts up 2,000 yards, no, he probably won't win it, but he would get an invite. And I think he's just – he's that good. Like, he could have left. He could have went to any university, but he said, I'm going to stick it out at Boise. And that just shows, like, what he loves about that community and that team. I'm going to stick Ashton Janty at number four. I love Ashton Janty, too. He's my five. He's just and awesome. He could eventually – I think that uh, ultimately his uh, level of competition is going to be what's hurt him, but I do have evidence that he can run against yeah. who most people thought yeah. was a top five team in the country. He came and brought it against Oregon, so we know he can do it at the top level. But yeah, Ashton GNT to me, uh, nation's leading rush right now, like you said, over 10 yards of carry, like that guy has to be getting some consideration, some, some acknowledgement. I'm tired of this being just a quarterback award, and I got two non-quarterbacks in and my top five. I will say that number five for me, Oh, I was about to make a lot of high state fans mad. I was about to just I I was so close. I was I was Were you about I, to take a buckeye out? No, because I had Dylan Gabriel at five. But what I was going to do, and I I'm telling you, up until we recorded this, I had it on my list. Kyle McCord was gonna be on my list at five. And oh. I I would have made <laughs> I would have made so many high state fans so mad. I would have started oh, yeah. riots in the streets of Columbus, but I'm not going to do Kyle McCord. The only reason I'm not is because he's played basically no one like at all, uh, but he's looked good. Don't get me wrong. Kyle McCord's looked good. Um, I'm going to keep Travis Hunter in for now. I was debating okay. it, but what sold me was kind of the thought that he is a two way player. And that kind of gives me the edge. I think, I think Colorado is going to be three and nine. And I think Dion gets fired after this year. That's a bold statement for me, but I just think it's going to be crazy, but um, yeah, but really it came down to, it uh, came down to Kyle McCord, uh, Will Howard and Travis Hunter. And I just have to give the edge to Travis Hunter. He's playing two ways and both Will Howard and, and, and Kyle McCord haven't really played anyone. Um, but yeah, I, if I would put Kyle McCord, I think everyone in their neighbor would have rolled over there in their beds and been yelling at me. So. Can we talk about Kyle McCord real quick? Yeah, though? yeah, for sure. Of course, yeah. Of so course. Kyle McCord's first two games as Ohio State starter last year were against IU and Youngstown State. In those games, first against IU, they won 23-3. to He went 20-33, 239 yards, no touchdowns, a pick. Against Youngstown, he, they won 35-7 to uh, with him throwing 258 yards, three touchdowns, no picks in that one. So in his first two games with Syracuse now, uh, against the Ohio Bobcats, 27-39, 354 yards, four touchdowns, one pick. And then against Georgia Tech, 31-28 uh, to 28 win uh, that they squeak out. Uh, in that one, he had 381 yards, four touchdowns, no picks. So slightly better competition than what he started out at Ohio State in these games. But I think the other thing to keep in mind is there's no, no pressure. pressure on Kyle McCord. No pressure at all. This is dude. exactly what we thought he wanted. Why he left yeah. Ohio State, why he didn't join like another did. contending team. He went to a team with no expectations where he could be the clear cut starting quarterback, not have to compete, not yeah. have a spotlight on him. And if he, you know, thrives in this environment and goes 10 and 2, good for him. That's what he wanted. He didn't want to, you know, compete for anything. But, but I'll always hold it against him, man. Like the yeah. fact that this guy just. <laughs> we learned a lot about like uh, the complete opposite of a guy like Devin Brown that's been staying there, Dude, trying to compete still there. to win that starting like, job. He, he's, yeah. still, he's still going to be the backup this year and he's okay with it. Like, yeah. Look, I. He's I, a fighter. I think Kyle McCord Kyle, wasn't. I think Kyle McCord is a great quarterback. It's not a great quarterback. He's a good quarterback. Mm -hmm. My issue has always been with Kyle McCord is that it showed last year that he has no, he has, he has no kahunas. He is mm -hmm. he's willing to fold under pressure, 
like even Marvin Harrison was like, he, you know, his, his best friend, it's his buddy. And even Mar Harrison kind of came out and was kind of like, it was interesting. Like, you know, <laughs> like, it, like when your best bud is saying that, like, I just think he didn't like the spotlight, but, yeah, when I've heard, you know, again, I think number wise, yeah, he could be on this list, but I think at the end of the year, he's just going to be one of those guys that fades into that obscurity. But I just thought it'd be funny if I threw him on the list. It would be. Let's finish up the show by talking a little bit of yeah previews for this week. We'll finish up the show. With yeah, this. we do have a couple interesting matchups, but I mean, week two had a lot more interesting games on it than what we thought. So yeah, true. There's no weeks off in college football. But we do get to kick it off Friday uh, this week with the top 25 matchup. We got Arizona at Kansas State, Ben. That's going to be a good one. Uh, a 14, Kansas State hosting 20, Arizona. Kansas State coming in this one as the 7.5-point favorite. You know I love stuff like that. I think the other thing uh, to look at here, both these guys got some solid quarterback play. Noah Fafita over at Arizona. He puts up the numbers. Avery Johnson hasn't uh, quite put the numbers up yet, but he also hasn't really needed to because yeah. – Kansas State's had a heck of a run game in their first two games of the season. Um, DJ Giddens, or not DJ Giddens, or excuse me, yeah, DJ Giddens actually, um, as a runner and a receiver actually has been pretty good. Uh, 238 yards uh, so far to start the season on the ground. Uh, Dylan Edwards right behind him has been uh, 97 yards and two touchdowns on just nine carries, so averaging you know over 10 yards per carry himself. And Avery Johnson has also had some uh, nice performances on the ground too. Uh, and I do like uh, Kansas State's defense a little bit in this one. They allowed six to UT Martin. They allowed 27 to Tulane. Arizona, on the other hand, hasn't really gotten tested, but they did allow 39 to New Mexico, and they allowed 10 to Northern Arizona. But that was a game, too, that they only won 22 to 10. I'm leaning Kansas State in this one. I don't know if they cover that 7.5, um, but I'll wait to give my final score prediction. I want to hear what you have uh, from Kansas State and Arizona. You see people, he always just checks in with the master. Um, and no, uh, <laughs> Kansas State, Arizona. Dude, it's one of those games where I'm just like, I, I could go either way. But Arizona, you barely beat the Northern Arizona Lumberjacks. I'm sorry. When you can barely beat the <laughs> Northern Arizona Lumberjacks, then you have an issue. Um I just think Kansas State is going to put it together. Like you said, it, you know, sometimes it takes a few teams, you know, even like a high state, every team, it takes them a while to, you know, get things rolling. I'm going to go Kansas State in this. I think they will. I think they're going to win by two touchdowns. I think it's going to be like a, I'm going to go a 35 21 victory. 35 21 victory, Kansas State. I think it'll be a little closer. I'm going with 30 to 28, Kansas State. Interesting. Okay. I like that. Uh, kicking off the Saturday slate, we have Alabama at Wisconsin, Ben. This could be a tricky Al game for Alabama. I just want to point that out to Alabama fans, just saying. If you don't pull away from South Florida in the fourth quarter, yeah, I'm kind of thinking the same thing. But it's also not like Wisconsin's done anything to make them fascinated. They with them barely either. beat Western Michigan, and then you saw Western Michigan get destroyed by its yeah. 50 by Ohio they have, State. They have a 28-14 to 14 win over Western. They have a 27-13 to 13 win over South Dakota. And your quarterback, Tyler Van Dyke, only has one touchdown and 400 yards in those two games combined. Yeah, Where's the offense going to come from in this one? No, it's true. I mean, their defense is not like Chaz Malus has I mean, been running yeah. all over the place either. And their defense has been good. It's not been a bad defense. I mean, they, I think their defense played pretty solid. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I'm Alabama. They have that Ryan Williams. He's like 17 years old, by the way, which is wild. And he's like a freak. <laughs> so good. But I also don't think he's played anyone. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just biased with Jeremiah Smith, but I still think Jeremiah Smith is the best. Jeremiah freshman, Smith and Ryan Williams, man. Those mm. two. Um, but I'm going to say, yeah, Alabama, I think they will go up. And I think, again, I wouldn't be shocked if they lose, but I, I'll say Alabama wins. I'm going to say Alabama wins. We're going to go 28 to 10. Alabama wins 28 to 10. I, I just don't think, I don't think Wisconsin going to be able to score. That's the thing. I'll, I'll give the Alabama offense a little more credit. I'm going to actually give them 38. And I think Wisconsin only gets 17 in this one. Ooh. I think they'll, yeah. It's nasty. Uh, Interesting matchup in the SEC here, also at noon. LSU at South Carolina. We saw LSU against USC week one, and then we did see them actually get it done against Nichols 44-21 the week before. Uh, South Carolina, um, 
Squeak Haven't, one out hasn't played Dominion. Nicholas Harbor, by the way, who's on my fantasy team. I have not played ah. him a single ounce at all. He was supposed to be this freak, and they've played him nothing. So salty about that. Spent a freaking eighth round draft pick on him. Man, Gosh. don't you hate it when you waste an eighth round draft pick? So uh, anyway, though, Gamecocks squeaked one against Old Dominion week one, 23 to 19, but they pounded Kentucky 31 to six. They were an underdog going into that game, too, I believe. Uh, but also, Kentucky's not Sellers. That good, though. Well, yeah, Kentucky, nobody expects them to be a leader or anything like that. They did beat Southern Miss week one, 31 to nothing, but then allow 31 and only score six. Uh, you would have liked to see more from Brock Vandergriff in this one. Only three for 10 with 30 yards. That's like, awful. Very bad. Very bad. That's so bad. I'm also wondering if, uh, since Mark Stoops tried to leave Kentucky for Texas A&M, if his players aren't necessarily playing with the same uh, drive to win for him. Probably not. When you see something like that. Probably but, not. Yeah, I think we do want to learn a little bit about uh, both of these teams, though, still. And maybe we'll have some of those questions answered. LSU on the road here is a seven-point favorite. But yeah, I'm, everybody I'm, talks I'm, about Williams Bryce Stadium being hard to play at, or at I, least one of the more underrated crowds. I'm, to deal I think with. I'm going to go. No, I'm going to go South Carolina this one. I think South South Carolina is going to win. I'm going to say. I'm going to say 28-24. I think South Carolina squeaks one out. 28-24. Ooh. See, I think that uh, what I saw from Garrett Nussmeyer while it was just against Nichols was still like I know I got the edge of quarterback play here and Lenora Sellers. It's just is to still give up young twenty-one points things. to Nichols though. That's the I know. thing that scares me. And the LSU defense is always what's going to be the concern, I guess, with this team. Exactly. But since I really think that it's going to be a close game, I'm going to go ahead and give the edge to the team that I think has the better quarterback. Uh, so I'll go ahead with uh, Garrett Nussmeyer and the Tigers here to get a close road win of 27 to 24. Ooh, I like it. I like it. Moving on to uh wait, I'm looking at South Carolina's schedule, not the actual week 3 schedule. <laughs> it's like why do we keep seeing them. Okay. Um the Oregon Ducks, Ben, uh go to Oregon State. They're 16 and a half point favorite here. Is this going to be the game that they finally like snap out of it? Yes. And win convincingly. Yes, if they can stop the run, because Hankerson is a beast of a running back for Oregon State. Um, so I, I'm going to say yes. I think Oregon has to figure out because I think they know they have to figure it out because they're going to about to face a high state soon, and they if they watch the film of a high state, they know a high state's not going to just like pat them on the back. Yeah, they're going to come in full bore, and so I think Oregon wins this game. I think they win it pretty handily. It's a rivalry game. I'm going to say Oregon wins. I'm going to go. Th- 38 to I'm going to say 24 38 24 yeah Hankerson and then Griffin each got uh, over 220 yards and three touchdowns yeah. each so they got a two-headed monster over there with the Beavers too they've beaten San Diego State 21 to nothing they've beaten Idaho State 38 to 15 it looks like they're handling business against the teams that they should as well uh but I still think that while Oregon has struggled in these first two games i they're going to eventually snap out of it at some point. Um, maybe they still won't defeat Oregon State by quite that point spread. I think about two touchdowns, like what you said, somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, I'll give the I'll give the Ducks um, thirty three, and I'll give Oregon State twenty. Like it. Um. Let's see. I think the other game that I gave you was, um, was it? It oh was. yeah, Boston College at Missouri. Yeah, a matchup of top twenty-five teams that we would have never thought. Yeah, you know, it's an interesting game. Um, Missouri is one of those teams where they're going to be that team that goes like ten and two and barely squeaks in the playoff because they play like no one. Um, and I think Boston College, they're I think that they got really they really had a nice win, but I just I'm not as high on them. I looked at their team. I watched some of the film. I just, I'm not sold yet. I just think Missouri, because they play in the SEC, I think they have that little extra of a, an advantage a little bit, I think. Their offense is also looking really good. Their defense is looking solid. I'm going to say Missouri wins this. I'm going to say... Mm, I'm going to say 27 to 20. 27 to 20. 
looking good might be an understatement, Ben, for that Missouri defense because while they true, have yes. only played Buffalo and Murray State, they haven't allowed a single point yet this year. Yeah, well, also, Buffalo is probably the worst FBS team in college football. So Maybe. Boston College like against that. Duquesne and Florida State has only allowed 13 points, too. True. We might see a, we might see a low-scoring game in this one, although I think that uh, Brady Cook's still a solid quarterback in Missouri. Uh, we haven't had to see uh, – Luther Burden have to do a whole ton either. Um, kind of like how Marvin Harrison Jr. didn't do a whole lot in his first few games at the start of last year either, maybe. But Boston College, definitely a surprise. We're going to learn about a lot about them in this game, but I still think Missouri is going to go ahead and take this one. But I do think that it's going to be a, maybe a little ugly at times, maybe a little more lower scoring, but I think Missouri is going to get it done maybe like a 27 to 18 final or something like that. Ooh. I like that. Yeah, I like Missouri to win this though. All right. Well, that's the that's the slate. I mean, we can uh throw out maybe a couple other ones here that are gonna be happening, like uh Georgia plays Kentucky, uh Ole Miss plays Wake Forest. We mentioned Tennessee uh plays Kent, and then uh who's Ohio State got? Did you say they're, uh, they're a bye? bye. Yes, they have a bye this week. A bye, okay. Uh let me see if there's anything else uh, going on here. Uh, maybe at least worth mentioning matchup-wise. Let's see. I mean, Tulane is playing at Oklahoma, and Tulane did, like I said, almost get uh, – who was it? Kansas State? Uh, yeah, they almost yeah. got Kansas State. But, yeah, they play Oklahoma. So, after Oklahoma against Houston, we're going to see if they can bounce back there. Uh, Texas A&M is coming to my Florida Gators. Still don't feel good about that. We do have the backyard bra, West Virginia at Pitt. Great rivalry game right there. That is true. Um, we have, let's see. I think there might be one more of note here. Uh, oh, no, that's it. Like I said, you never know who might be on the upset alert, who might blow it, or who might come out with a surprise win. But at least those games that we just previewed, I think, are all the big ones that everybody's going to have the most eyes on. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And again, there's other news going on in sports. Uh, we didn't talk about this last week, but our, our prayers and thoughts do go to the – I can never say their name correctly. G- Godot? Goudreau. Goudreau family. That's yeah. just a tragic, tragic thing that you uh, – it's just it's sad it, it truly is um so our prayers go to them um also uh the great um voice of darth vader he was in many sports movies um mm-hmm. the great what's his name jones uh it's james a, earl jones earl jones in so, sandlot in field yeah. of dreams they will come they will come if you uh, build it they will come people will again come, Ray. and again like um it's always tough for those families but again uh some some amazing people that have life is either gone short or they've lived a long life so prayers mm-hmm. go out to them um again obviously baseball otani's going for 50 50 maybe we'll talk about that next week yeah uh, as still as, getting, as, as, uh, getting yeah. a little closer i think he added a little bit more to that yes he did he did uh, so. at least as far as playoff races go cleveland now has three and a half games up on kansas city they did do what they needed to do to get things done uh, in that series with them, also uh, did a little bit better against the Dodgers than what I thought they might. Uh, and that's still only winning one of the three games. They didn't get swept, though. Thank goodness. That's true. Now they get to you know have an easy uh, you know stretch here with the White Sox for the next three before playing a four-game series against Tampa Bay, which I'll actually be at one of the games on Friday. Look at you. Look at you. Yeah. Not, uh, not traveling across the country to a game. Actually supporting my boys. There you go. Uh, Maybe Junior Caminero will hit a three home run game since it's someone on the road team. That is true. That is true. That I'm at. True. True. Uh, hopefully, you guys had a phenomenal time listening. I hope you guys uh, are keeping tuned to what we're talking about, especially like with the power rankings, Heisman watch list. Let us know. Like, do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think Ben is crazy? Do you think Josh is crazy? <laughs> I mean, it's already true, but if you think of it more, you can. Uh, but if you love listening on Apple Pod, uh, sorry, if you love watching on YouTube, go hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Allow us to know kind of what's happening. Comment below. What is your weekend looking like? 
what games are you going to watch? Are you going to have like 20 on the screens? Like when I was in college, I had like a laptop, iPad. I had so many different screens going. It was crazy. Um, or are you just going to focus on one game? And if you love listening to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, go click that thumbs up button. This thumbs up button. No, you rate it. You rate it. You star you rate, rate on it. Spotify. I think you like you on do. YouTube. You do. Yes, that's what you do. It's so. Why can't they just have the same thing? I never understood that. But that's besides the point. Um, hopefully, you guys have a great weekend. It's getting cool out. Fall is coming. It's my favorite time of the year. I'm so excited. Uh, I'm not sweating at night anymore. So, you know. Thank, you. Thank goodness. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Uh, we hope you guys have a great weekend. And until next time, we'll see ya.